Howdy friends, thanks for joining me today for another video. Today I'm going to try my hand again at ranking, but I'm only going to rank a small section of Bob Dylan's catalog. I'm going to rank the bootleg series that Bob Dylan has released. All right, let's get started. I'm going to go from least uh, favorite to favorite, and I'm going to count the first release, uh, volumes one, two, and three, as one release because they were released like that. They were put out with three discs, in a set, even though he called it volumes one, two, three, um, I'm calling that one volume. Um, and a little note uh, how I rate things as far as what I like. Um, I love hearing unreleased songs, things I've never heard before. Um, so the live ones aren't necessarily going to be at the top of the list for me. Uh, I have a lot of live Bob Dylan and bootleg version, real bootlegs, <laughs> as well as his bootlegs. And they're great. Some of them I really like. Um, but I really, really, when, when he puts out a, a new uh, bootleg series, I really crave new songs, things I've never heard from him before. So let's get going. All right, starting with um, the least favorite, uh, the Whitmark de demos coming in, I think, at number, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, yeah, number 13. Bob Dylan's The Whitmark Demos, uh, 19... 62 to 64. This has a lot of fragments. These are really nice sets, I will say. This has not a lot of fragments, but it has some fragments of songs. It has some very skeletal songs. It has him playing a lot of piano. Um, it's very early days. Um, and I, I love early Bob Dylan. I love his first four records, but I don't um, necessarily like to hear more and more of that. So um, this one I was really looking forward to. Um, I think I, I saw before it came out that it had songs on it that I had never heard before, and so I was looking forward to that. And then I came out and I heard it, and it was just, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it sounds like it was recorded in 1962 and 64, and it's just not my favorite of his stuff. It does have some songs that I probably don't know, but it's got lots of just him, you know, other versions of the songs that were already released, like Blowing in the Wind and. Um, you know, uh, 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 Ballad of Hollis Brown, When the Ship Comes In, Paths of Victory, Tambourine Man, Bob Dylan's Blues, I Shall Be Free, you know, all of these songs um, were released already. Um, and so there, there are a bunch of songs, some on here that I haven't heard, but mostly it's kind of, you know, going over the same old territory. So that's number 13. Coming in at number 12, a live version of a 1964 show from uh, the Philharmonic Hall, and just him and guitar and harmonica. Um, and it's decent, you know, it's okay, but it's something I'm not going to go back to, his, his early live recordings, just him playing guitar and singing to a fawning crowd that he's going to make fun of <laughs> and insult, because um, they think he's a folk singer and he doesn't. He's a song and dance man, or whatever he is at that particular moment. But anyway, this comes in at number 12. It's okay, I like it, you know, but it's just not my favorite thing, him playing live at that time period, just by himself. Um, uh, yeah, it's not my favorite thing. Um, and those songs, again, I've, you know, I love them on the original albums, and that's enough. All right, coming in at number 11 is um, more Blood on the Tracks, um, the Bootleg Series Volume 14 or whatever, but for me it's number 11. Um, you know, this has been circulating in the bootleg world forever. I, I don't know how they got eight or, you know, the, the deluxe version has eight or nine or more CDs. I don't know how many. I don't know how they got that out of this. But um, it's just, you know, people say it's interesting to hear, you know, to see the evolution of a song. And I agree to a, to a degree, <laughs> but it, I think it's a little bit tedious. And honestly, the album that he came out uh, with out of these songs is just light years better. It's just so much better. These are very skeletal um, And they're interesting. They're nice, uh, but it's again. It's just more of the same and I've been hearing these songs already I've heard them on the bootleg uh, Before this came out and I've heard them of course in the original and the only new song is up to me Which was on biograph, so it's not really a new song. Um, I think that's the only new one. I can't even read it all um, yeah, the rest of them are just him doing the album. So this comes in pretty lo low on the list. So that's number 11. Now we're down to number 10. Um, Bob Dylan's uh, bootleg series, Live 1966 at Royal Albert Hall. 
you know, I guess I've just heard too much of this stuff over and over and over and over. And I did do a video a while back of, um, oh, actually, I guess I haven't put the, posted that video yet, so I shouldn't talk about it. <laughs> I am posting a video soon of my Bob Dylan bootleg box sets, and it's got some 66 stuff in it. And, uh, you know, I like it okay. It's good. Uh, I didn't used to like it when it first came out. I thought it was a bunch of screaming, screeching, crazy stuff. But I listened to this recently, and I liked it quite a bit. Or I listened to one of the bootlegs, and I was like, wow, that tour actually was pretty good. So it's higher on the list than the first three, and I, I like it okay. Um, but it's not my favorite Dylan era, even though it's, you know, one of most people's favorites. All right, so that comes in at number 10. Now, number nine is the most, I think it's the most recent, yeah, the most recent traveling through. And once again, a lot of this stuff has already been circulating on bootlegs and I'd heard a lot of it. So it was kind of like, oh, well, there's that, you know, uh, great, but I'd like to hear some new stuff to me, new to me stuff that I hadn't heard before. Um, it is nice, though, you know, stuff, it's, it's interesting, an interesting peek into the stuff, uh, you know, with him and, um, well, first of all, the outtakes are from, uh, Nashville Skyline and, and um, John Wesley Harding, which is kind of cool, you know, um, and then there's a bunch of hodgepodge of stuff he was doing at that time with those with uh, Nashville musicians and here's stuff from the Johnny Cash sessions, the Johnny Cash show, and there's this great bootleg of him, you know, and Johnny Cash just playing. Um, and then here's some stuff with um, Earl Scruggs and him and um, I think more with Johnny Cash and so I guess this doesn't go higher on the list because I'd already kind of heard all this stuff. It already made the rounds, um, but I like it. And so um, that comes in at number nine. Now we come in at number eight, right? Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, this is number eight. Um, the Rolling Thunder Review, 75 tour. I do like that tour. It's not my, my favorite tour, but I, I like it quite a bit. Um, and I do have some cool stuff from that tour, which I'll show in that other video I was mentioning. Um, and, uh, it's not the best band he ever put together. It's pretty ragged. Um, I know there are people who don't like Mick Ronson's guitar playing and how frenetic it is and how, um, coked out they seem. They just seem like a really ragtag hyper bunch, which is funny because you don't think of ragtag and hyper to go together. But, you know, a lot of the music is really amped up and then... A lot of the, um, oh, and it comes with this little extra little bonus DVD with a few songs. Um, you know, so I like this tour. I like this um, set, and I think it's good. Uh, and there's a lot out there from this tour. But it's not my f the best tour or my favorite tour of Dylan. And uh, I get it when people say that they don't dig that band a whole lot. Um, I do like him singing with Joan Baez quite a bit. Some of the things like Railroad Boys and Deportees, really nice. Um, anyway, so that comes in at number eight, I believe I said. And that is, uh, yeah, this is Rolling Thunder Review. Don't ask me what I think of the movie. All right, so there's that. Um... Okay, next, Bob Dylan and the band, The Basement Tapes Raw is the one I opted to get. This also had a couple of different versions, a big giant one with lots of CDs, and I think this is the smallest one, and if this is really too tight, because I haven't listened to it much, um, except when I first bought it probably, then I might leave it in there, but um, <clears throat> this has, you know, th there was a um, something called the Genuine Bootleg Series, or uh, there was something put out, uh, Tree with Branches it was called, and it was um, like a six CD bootleg set of all this stuff that he did with the band that never made it to the album, um, Basement Tapes, the two, the, the uh, you know, milestone, groundbreaking Basement Tapes of all this roots, country and rock and stuff that they were doing, and blues, and very interesting stuff, some really fun stuff, and some really ragged stuff, and just, it just, it seems like they were just having a good time. And definitely stuff that hadn't been really heard before. Um, so I like this quite a bit. Um, I like that they released, um, you know, an expanded version with more stuff than the original. So I'll get to hear some more recordings from that, more songs. Um, and I, yeah, I'll probably never be able to get it back in now. And I, uh, so yeah, this comes in at number seven. I think it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool set. 
Um, next is number six comes in at uh, is uh, No Direction Home, the soundtrack of the Martin, Martin Scorsese picture. I think that's like a three hour film on, on Dylan, and it's very good. I like it quite a bit. And this one has some unreleased stuff, and some electric stuff, and some acoustic stuff, and um, quite a bit of stuff from this period. And um, yeah, it's just uh, got songs I haven't heard on it. And I believe it does. I know the next one does. I believe this one does too. Um, I do collect these and don't, you know, go back and listen to them a lot. Uh, I will say the first one I listened to, I have listened to quite a bit. But let's take a look at the song list and make sure there are things on here, as I recall. Um, there's definitely some older stuff. Ramblin', uh, Rambler Gambler is pretty great. Um, home recording, but still pretty great. Um, so a lot of these songs are, yeah, have been released, but these are alternate takes, alternate versions, and they're things from Bringing It All Back Home and Highway 61 Revisited, that kind of stuff, so that electric stuff, and then there's a little bit of acoustic stuff on there as well, some from the Minnesota tapes, it looks like, and some songs I haven't, you know, heard other than here, so that's cool. Next is more of that kind of thing, the best of the cutting edge, so now we're at number... This is number five, um, 65 to 66, that same era. And this definitely has some stuff on it that I had not, that, you know, you're not going to hear anywhere else. So like California, Lunatic Woman. And um, and it's just got a, oh, if you got to go, go now, which is on Biograph, I think. But there's some really cool stuff on here. And this one is mostly, I think, electric um, and uh, full, full band. Probably, I think it is the band. Well, it's not the band. I guess it's Al Cooper and those guys. And, but it is, it's pretty great stuff um, from that era. And stuff that, you know, didn't get put onto the albums. To, well, alternate takes mostly. But there are some unreleased songs. And, uh, yeah, pretty cool. From Kind of from the Blonde on Blonde era and, and around there, those first three electric albums. And then... Uh, is there some acoustic stuff on here? I don't think so. I can't remember. Next is a real, real whopping beautiful set that I think is fantastic. Now we're coming into the real, real cream of the crop here, in my opinion. Um, another self-portrait, 1969 to 1971. A lot of people are going to say, what? You like self-portrait? I love self-portrait. Part of it is because I liked it when I was a kid. I assume that's part of it. You know, I had the double LP, the double album as a kid. And part of it is because um, this new set has a ton of unreleased stuff in it um, that was you just never heard before. Um, it's got a nice book. I've got this, you know, special edition. This is the only one I think I have the deluxe edition. Um, and I might have shown this in my Bob Dylan CDs video. I don't remember. I know I showed all of these. I don't know how much I I opened if I opened them or went into them physically, literally, but. Um, so that's that, and then there is this book with the um, CDs in it, and there's, um, it's kind of goofy packaging, it opens up like this, <laughs> and then like this. So there's four CDs in here, um, boy, I don't even remember what the, all of them, I know one of them is the Isle of Wight concert, Bob Dylan and the band at the Isle of Wight, um, let's see what they are. Uh, this one is, um, it doesn't say, just, it'll say on the back of the box. This one is um, just a whole bunch of demos and yeah, alternate takes. That's what the first two are. Um, but the, And stuff from New Morning, stuff from Self Portrait. This, the third disc is the complete historic Isle of Wight concert. And the fourth disc, oh, of course, is the original um, Self Portrait. And I guess it's probably, yeah, remastered 2013. So that's what you get for all this. And, um, and I just, I just think it's worth it. Um, this one also is a little bit of a, has a book on the front of it as well. Um, and I just, I love hearing all these songs that I've never heard before and, um, and all these different takes of, you know, ones that I had heard before and does some interesting covers on this. I think I said this before. Yeah, I probably did show this in the other video because I remember telling you that I, I thought the boxer was a, um, <laughs> was a Bob Dylan song because that's the first place I heard it, the first person I heard it from. There's a lot of songs like that in my life, but when I was a kid, I heard them and I thought that was that was who they were. That was who wrote them. I didn't know about covers yet. Anyway, um, this is a wonderful set coming in at number 
four. Now, number three, trouble no more. Yeah, you heard me, this is bad ass. Uh, this is just a rockin', rockin', rip-roarin' set. Uh, if you don't like his religious years, you will still probably like this. It is a just rip-roarin' set, and even if you don't like the, his religious years, you got to admit that the songs are good and the albums are good, even if you don't like the content of the um, the writing. I, I understand that, I get that. But the albums are good, the songs are good, the production is pretty good. Um, and this is just a kick-ass um, set of two, you know, two CDs worth of live recordings from that tour, and the band was just on fire. Um, uh, and he had these great backup singers, too, and um, it's just really good, really good. All right, this leads us into number two, Telltale Sign, rare and unreleased recordings. And um, from 19, what is it, say 89 to 2000, is that right? Yeah, 89 to 2006. Um, this has a ton of stuff that is just, it's nowhere else. And um, unreleased songs, a couple things from soundtracks, but I think they're different takes. Um, and some real great stuff with his later sound, you know, his 2000s and 90s sound. That great electric band. There's probably, I imagine, John Jackson's on some of these. and. Um, Charlie Sexton probably is, and Tony Garnier, and, you know, that later group of people he played with. Um, yeah, let me take a look at the songs on here. This has um, Mississippi, of course, from um, Love and Theft, I think, Most of the Time, and Dignity. So those are, re, you know, re, re, those are alternates that have had been released. Someday Baby did come out after this, or maybe it came out before this, on Modern Times, I think. Uh, Red River Shore is from a soundtrack, I believe, so is Tell Old Bill. Born in Time, uh, Can't Wait, is from, of course, Time Out of Mind, Everything is Broken. Dreaming of You, Huck's Tune, I don't know where that's from, I don't remember, I can't read this really. Martian to the City, High Water, of course, that is one of them. So there, there are a bunch of alternate takes, but this just sounds so, so good. The Lonesome River, Across the Green Mountain, that's a soundtrack, uh, from a soundtrack. The Girl on the Greenbrier Shore, uh, Ring Them Bells, God Knows, Series of Dreams. And there's only a couple of songs on here repeated. You know, all the other ones, not, not all of them, but many of them, their songs repeated. And this has Mississippi and Dignity are the only ones that there's, you know, there's a couple of alternate takes. Anyway, I highly recommend this one. I think it's fantastic. Comes in at number two. And the last one, you could have guessed it, obviously, right? And I even kind of hinted at it. One through three. Uh, when this first came out, this was just uh, a gold mine. I was so thrilled with this. All these unreleased tracks, songs I'd never heard before. Just a wonderful, wonderful set. Um, and it goes, it's kind of, you know, uh, chronological and a career, career spanning set. Um, and boy, it really has some beautiful songs on it. And it has some alternate takes, but it has lots of unreleased material. I think this one probably has the most unreleased material on it. Um, so let's take a look at some of these songs. Um, Hard Times in New York Town, of course, was on his first album, but then, and there's a bunch of this early acoustic stuff, which is great, um, but then it picks up um, on disc two, um, it has Seven Curses, which is just him and guitar, but it's later, and it's just a gorgeous, heart-wrenching song. Eternal Circle, Sue's Mama, You've Been on My Mind, Farewell, Angelina. And then we have some alternate takes of other songs that we already know. And then I'll keep it with mine. Um, Santa Fe, If Not For You, Wallflower, I think this is the only place that is at. Um, Call Letter Blues, uh, that's, I don't think that's anywhere else. A different alternate of Series of Dreams, and um, Tell Me, Foot of Pride, um, Golden Loom. Catfish, uh, I mean, there's just lots, every grain of sand is an alternate of that. Uh, lots of, lots of beautiful, great songs on this, and lots of stuff that um, you just can't hear anywhere else. So that is my number one. So once again, I'll do a quick um, show you through. This is number one for me, anyway. This is number two, number three, number four. Number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number ten, 
number 11, and number 12, number 13. And I'm looking forward to the new one that's supposed to be coming out with all the George Harrison recordings with him, although a lot of that has been circulating. If it's what I think it is, has been circulating already on bootlegs, and I have a bunch, but um, it could be very, very cool. Anyway. Please let me know what you think of the Bob Dylan bootleg series. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you have a ranking or any favorites that you like, put them in the comments. Please subscribe, like, and uh, thanks so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye.